there. And so we are right now recording. And uh, today is October the 21st, 2021. Uh, this is week nine of the fall 2021 Monroe Community College CAD for Construction class. And that's what we're going into right now. Uh, this week, we're going to start Revit, uh, introducing Revit and uh, how Revit operates and uh, some of the things that we could actually do with that. So let me see here. OK, so let's do this right now. Uh, let's just go back to here and let's just review something because what we're going to do right now, I'm going to post it to the side here, bring it over here actually. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drop that down there. And over here on the what's do when, you may have noticed that the color here is, it's changed to brown. I just changed that because what's happening is I've added an additional assignment here, which actually it's not really an addition. I just decided to, to, uh, to put it on this right now, but it's called the Revit Sandbox, okay? Uh, this is just a simple house. Essentially, you really can't get it wrong. The only thing you could you could get wrong is if you don't hand it in. That's all that you could really do wrong with this. Other than that, it's 100 points easy. Uh, you just have to kind of like, you know, get in there. It's like a sandbox approach. So you're going to be doing that right now, essentially just scratching around and rev it. That's going to be due next week. So that's what we got happening. So there is a project due next week. And going down here on this particular panel, you got Revit intro, sandbox, and uh, floor plan one. So here's Revit Sandbox. This is what we're going to, this is what you do next week. We're going to create, complete a simple house with walls, a roof, a floor, and at least two doors and four windows. You're going to submit it as Revit Sandbox with your last name. Okay. And so we've got this going on. And then there's a few other things that we have right here. Uh, the next week, we're going to get into the Revit floor plan one. So that's, that's going to be a different one right there, which we'll get into. So anyway, there's a few things here. I've got these things right here from last semester. I should probably, I'll probably pull those off of there because those are actually a year old. They're still good information, but I'll probably replace them with something else here. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Revit. When we talk about Revit, what is Revit? Well, Revit is actually the next logical progression as we go from uh, as we go forward from CAD. Okay, so you've had AutoCAD, and in addition to that, what you have happening right now is AutoCAD was a huge improvement upon manual drafting. Manual drafting was essentially the same as it had been for hundreds of years, where you actually had a, uh, you would actually have a sheet of paper and you would use pencil and then probably ink it to make permanent, to make a permanent uh, floor plan, to make a permanent elevation plan, to make a permanent detail plan, whatever that might be. And it is all inked and perfectly done. Now, it's uh, so that is basically what the approach was until AutoCAD came along. AutoCAD allowed you to do the same things electronically, which made edits and additions and changes much easier, as well as copying information made it so much easier. So it was a major, major breakthrough in um, uh, moving forward between manual drafting. Huge, huge improvement. And the same kind of um, kind of uh, uh, C change is happening right now, moving from uh, AutoCAD to Revit, which is BIM, which stands for Building Information Modeling. Let me stop for a second and explain what we mean by that. When you are working with um, Revit, what you're going to be doing is actually building a virtual model. You, you, uh, and the virtual model is essentially going to be a 3D model of something like the Lego model I talked about before. And you're gonna, but you basically just take a look at it in different uh, in different views. So you can see it from the top. If you see it from the top down, that's a floor plan. If you can see it from the side, that's an elevation. If you were to basically take it, take half of it off, that would be a section. And that is what you can do with Revit. So it's actually very, very, very cool. Now, let me just kind of tell you something about why it is really good for you guys to pay attention and to understand this. And this is why I say this because I've been teaching um, AutoCAD for, for 26 years, and I've been teaching Revit for the last five years, and I've been working with Revit for a long time. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've been teaching Revit online for the last uh, three years, and the number of classes that I'm teaching for Revit right now has basically doubled. Okay, it's been doubled, even with the pandemic. So there's this massive need for Revit right now. People need to know this. So if you can speak... Revit, if you can speak Revitese, as it were, if you can understand and actually um, be comfortable with opening up a Revit uh, project and working with it and being able to just, you know, kind of like find your way around inside there, 
that is huge because a lot of people don't even know where to start. You're going to learn how to start and quite a bit more in these next few weeks here. So that's what we're going to work on right now. So that's a little bit of, a, of the lay of the land right here. Now let me show you real quickly uh, what Revit looks like. So here's Revit. I got Revit right down here. And you guys can see Revit on my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So I got Revit right here. Now I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to just do a couple things here just to give you an idea as far as how this works. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This is a modern hotel Revit file. Now, when you open up a file in Revit, you basically have this kind of a look right here. This is a 3D model. And you may say, oh, well, that's kind of nice. Well, this is 3D, but it's more than that, okay? If I go ahead and take this, I can actually take it and rotate it around. I can actually rotate it around like I'm doing right here. I have complete control over going ahead and doing that kind of a thing. Now, as far as this goes, I've got this look, and then I can also go down here and I can change the visual style. I can change it to a wireframe, change it to wireframe, which is actually showing you that right there. So you're actually seeing through the uh, particular structure and you're actually seeing that right there, which is yeah, not real helpful in this view. But if I go and make a hidden line, it just gives it a uh, basically a gray tone. There's no colors on it. And then from there, I can progress it through. I can go to shaded where it gives me this kind of look. Now shaded actually is giving you shadows and so forth, that kind of information. And then going down here, I can go to consistent colors where it actually just gives me flat colors. And then here I got this, one, which is realistic. Now realistic takes a moment to regenerate because it's actually doing kind of a low level rendering. And the low level rendering will produce an image that looks like this here. So if I go ahead and take a look at this, you've got this going on. And this is one of the really cool things about Revit. You got the, this right here where you can actually see inside the glass here, and you've actually got this uh, railing that's actually here. You've got a, uh, you've got a, a, uh, a door for the stairway right there, the stairwell. And you've got these other things right there. So you got these and you have these doors to the actual individual um, hotel rooms right there. You have that. So this is what you've got going on right now. So I'm going to take this and kind of slice it around and do this. Now, now that I've done that, uh, I want to just kind of talk a little bit about how Revit is um, set up right here. So I've got this complete control over that. Then over here, you're going to notice that I have um, over here. And I've got over here, and uh, what I've got going on right now is uh, over here, I've got floor one and so forth. I got this. If I double click on floor one, I can do that. And when I double click on floor one, it opens this up. So this is what floor one looks like. So floor one looks like this, and uh, floor one is actually a, uh, a file that looks like this. So you have this floor plan information. And in addition to that, you have some other things going on here. You've actually got, uh, you've got some uh, basic room tags right here. You also have uh, wall tags, which actually are identifying the information. Over here, you actually have uh, tags for the doors. And up here, you've got tags for windows. You've got all these things going on right there. So that's all part of what's going on in this particular uh, file right here. You've got all that going on right there. Um, in addition to that, you also have a few other things happening. You've got that going on. And then uh, over here, you've got like a stairwell over on this over here. And so you've got some basic information. So all this is information that is being reported to us. That's all part of the 3D of the of the uh, of the building model. So we've got that going on right now. And anything that changes here will actually change elsewhere. So let me just give you an idea here. If I go here, I've got this 3D view right here. So I got a 3D view right here, and you'll see I've got these windows. So you got this real windows right here. I got these windows. You'll notice I got four right here. There's four windows. I could add a fifth one over here. And when I do, it'll show up in both of these views. Let me show you what, what that would look like. So if I go here, that actually starts on the second floor. So I'll go to the second floor. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the second floor. And I'm going to put another, put another window right here. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click on this window. And I'm going to copy it. So to do this, I'm going to click on this. And when I click on that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and copy it. So I'll copy it from here. And I want to go over eight feet. So I'll type in eight and hit enter. And I just put in another window right there. See that? Okay, so that window's right there. I didn't copy the tag. I should have, but we won't worry about that for right now. Now watch this. I go back to 3D and watch what happens here. But a boom, bada bing. There is a fifth window right there. So I got this fifth window right there. So that's there. Now that is looking pretty good. You may say, mm, well, you know what, Tom? That looks pretty cool, but you know, shouldn't there be, uh, since all those other windows are, are repeated all the way up, how can we do that too? Well, yes, we can. So what I'm going to do right here is to show you how this works. And we'll go back to this view here and uh, we'll go this way. I guess we can do it this way. This will work. And uh, we can go ahead and do this. Now watch this. I'm going to select this window. 
And then when I select this window, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go up here, copy to clipboard, just a regular Windows copy thing. This is like using Control C. And when I do that, I can then go ahead and I can paste it. I'm going to paste it, align to selected levels. So I'll do this. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to go say, go say floor three down to floor eight. And I'm going to hit OK. Now watch what happens. Watch my model. There they all are. Now, um, I don't hear any gasps or anything, but that's actually really cool what happened right there. It went ahead and copied all those windows right up there that quickly. Now, here's the other really great thing about this. If I were to go to floor three, for instance, floor three, well, there's the new window there. And if I were to go to floor four over here, there's the new window there. So that is how quickly you're able to add this information. So much quicker, it's so much easier than uh, you would actually do with AutoCAD. With AutoCAD, I would have had to go into each floor plan, place it, go to the next one, place it, measure it, and so forth. This time I do it one way and copy it up. Let me stop uh, for comments and uh, for questions or comments. Any, any comments about that? This is my first time thinking about it. I will not put the part on Dana, but it's very cool. Yeah, it, it is very cool. I would agree. Any other comments about that? Okay, so here's the takeaway. Now you have got some idea why everyone in the industry is moving, why everyone in the industry is moving to Revit. They're moving to Revit because you can do this stuff very quickly. Now you can also do some pretty crazy stuff here. Like you see this, uh, all this furniture down here. So if I were to go here and if I were to take a look at my 3D views, I can go to 3D view right here and go to this uh, 3D view of the breakfast area. So I go to here and this is what this looks like. And then I can go ahead and uh, change this so it's realistic. And this is what a lot of people are doing with Revit um as we're going along right here they're actually using it for doing renderings and doing information prior to building it so they know what's going to look like when they're all done so we have all this going on right here so that's uh that's what we have happening here and as i go through here you're able to take this and extend it out and to uh, do this kind of a thing like i'm showing you here and uh that is what we have right here Um, for somebody who's proficient in Revit, how long would it take to build that, or to model that hotel? Actually, when I teach this class, I teach this class actually in a four-day format, and we actually draw this entire thing in four days. Okay, now that is given, that now that is assuming right now that you have some CAD plans you can trace over the top of. And uh, so, yeah, that's actually what we do. We actually start by doing the walls, doing everything that's right there. Doing the floor plan, doing the floors, doing it during the roof, and uh, yeah, so it you can actually something like this. You could actually, if you if you were fairly proficient in Revit, uh, you could do this particular model. If you have uh, CAD floor plans, you could, and of course you could, you know, I, I you would be, need to go be go through some things and kind of like, you know, if everything went perfectly and you're just tracing over the top of AutoCAD plans. You're talking maybe a couple of weeks to, to, to do this whole thing and then it'd be tweaking it. But the beauty of it is once you've got one, and that's assuming that all the floors are the same. So once you get one floor, they're all the same, it's just a copy all the way up. If there's variances, it would, it would, uh, it would change on that. But yeah, that's, it's, it goes really quickly. It goes really, really quickly. Any other questions? Okay, so anyway, this is why people go to Revit. Let me tell you something, something else here. If you're interested in taking, if you're taking this class or you're just interested in AutoCAD and so forth, because you want to be, be employable, well, I'll tell you one thing, you can't, you can't do any better than Revit. Uh, Revit is a great thing to know how to do. And another thing that's really important for people right now in the industry is, um, it's very, it's, there's this real need for people right now who can lay out systems, meaning electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. Okay, it's called MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. So mechanical means HVAC. And when I say HVAC, that means heating, ventilation, air conditioning, HVAC, HVAC. And then uh, you've got electrical, which would be your electrical systems, uh, basically laying out electrical uh, information. And then you have plumbing, laying out your plumbing information. So those things 
are all systems that would go in a Revit model. So those are all things that you want to look at. We are not going to get into anything but the basic architectural aspects of it. But that's what you have right there. So that's kind of an idea as far as what you can do with Revit and how it works. And it's actually um, a lot of the things that you learn in AutoCAD carry over here into Revit. They really do. They've got that. So uh, you got floor one right here. You got this kind of a thing. And you'd start it with floor one right here and do your walls. The walls are typically done on the first floor because you need some kind of a boundary. Without, without that, without some kind of a boundary, you can't put your floors in. You can't put a ceiling because it doesn't know where to go. You'd have to trace it out. And by the time you trace it out, you might as well just make your walls. So you make your walls first. That's how that goes. And then you basically fill in the other information as you go along here. All right, so that's a basic uh, introduction to a to a model. Let's go into some theory now, a little bit of theory. And as I get in this right now, okay. And for whatever reason, this is just not. Uh, yeah, this is not right here. I don't know why it's. Uh, I'm going to turn this off, and we're going to turn that back on if we can. Try that again. All right, somebody. Uh, try to... Oh, there you go. Okay, you guys, you guys should be able to see me now. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on into the next thing there. By, by, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into this. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go into this. So take a look at this. You should be seeing right now. I've got a PowerPoint right here that goes along with this August Revit 2022 Fundamentals for Architecture. We're going to go through a couple things here. The first thing I'm going to do is this uh, introduction to BIM and Audis Revit. So I'm going to first of all describe the concept of BIM, building information modeling and uh, how it works with Revit. Now, um, here's what happens right here. When you've got this right here, you're going to have essentially uh, a model. And we saw the model for that hotel right there. It's like this right here. If you take a look at my screen right here, it's like this Lego model we talked about before. Here's a Lego model. And this Lego model is essentially what you have going on. OK, you create this Lego model right here. And then as you take a look at it from the side, that's an elevation. If you take a look at it from the top, that's a floor plan. And if you take a look at it from angle, that's like a 3D view, or that would be some kind of uh, view that would actually allow you to give more detail. And then you would have something like this if you want to do a section. You actually take out some of this information here, and that would give you a section when I take something off. Okay, so that's a section view. So that is what you have going on when you are working with, um, with, with Revit. Okay, so Revit is extremely good at, at doing this whole... Uh, building information modeling, and it uses what are called parametrics. Now, parametrics are a um, are, are, are parameters. You know, essentially, you're going to use parameters. And what what does that mean? It means this. It means there are certain things that Revit won't let you do that AutoCAD would. AutoCAD will let you draw walls that could never be built in real life. AutoCAD will let you do that. It's because it just looks at it as lines. It does not recognize anything that you're drawing is what it is in real life. It just is, okay, these are lines, put them where you want to. It's an etch sketch not a big deal. Revit doesn't think that way. Revit uses parameters. So when you are actually putting into Revit your different walls, the walls understand that they are walls. The walls understand that they actually are built with certain kind of structural constraints. And those constraints are what impacts your ability to lay out information. Now, as long as you're laying out something that can be built and that is logical and actually would conform conform to the uh, to the uh, to the standards and to uh, you know real real world logic, you can pretty much design anything you want to. Um, but if you try to try to go beyond that, Revit's going to gripe at you and give you errors. One thing Revit doesn't like is drawing walls on top of walls. In AutoCAD, you. Can Line on top of the line, AutoCAD doesn't care at all, very forgiving. You could have 30 lines on top of each other. You'd never see them, but you just have 30 lines and AutoCAD just like, oh, whatever. You got 30 lines on top of each other, I don't care. I'll just show you one line and you will not know that there's 30 unless you ask me. Well, Revit doesn't want you to do that. If you draw a wall in Revit and then you draw another wall on top, it just screams and says, you can't do this. Why? Because of the constraints, because of the parameters, because in real life, you can't build a wall inside of another wall. That doesn't work. It breaks rules. On the other hand, if you go to insert a window, I got a window right over here to my right. If you go to insert a window into the wall, that works. Revit will let you put a wall in all day long. It will let you put a door in the wall all day long. It will let you go ahead and put different objects that are actually related. Like, for instance, a tub. If you're putting a bathtub in, and it has a constraint for a wall, it's going to look around for a wall. And as long as you shove it up against the wall, boom, it'll find it and it'll go ahead and snap it. It'll go ahead and take it in. So that's what's going on when you're working with, with Revit. So 
So what, what this says here is you make a change here in the model and you're going to see it in the view. You're going to see it in a different view. So you have that. Now, here's the difference. Uh, traditional drafting was one way. You'll notice that the arrows here are all going in one direction. And what's happening right there is you have the plans drawn and they go in one direction. That's it. So the model is simply represented by that. And then you also have one way for your sections, one way for your elevations. And this is how it's all put together. And at the end of the day, you go ahead and you print up your CDs, which is your construction documents, your blueprints. Now over here, you'll notice that the arrows over here on the right, they're all two-way, meaning that I could go ahead and go into the model and change it around. And when I do that, my floor plan would be impacted, like I showed you with the windows. When I went ahead and, and uh, went into the floor plan and I added a window, I was able to go into the 3D view and I saw it, then I could actually copy it. And then when I did that, the plans, the elevations, the schedules, the sections are all updated all at once and are reflected in the construction documents. And you can also go to the construction documents and go in through the back end. And like, let's say you pull up a door and you could go ahead and change the parameters on that door, even change the type of door that it is and changing its number and changing its construction, its fire rating, all that kind of stuff. And it would go ahead and it would be backward compatible and you could actually fit it that way. So it's all together. And so it's like a database. If you ever read the database, Revit's essentially a database with a graphical front end is what's happening right there. Um, here's a couple of things that you got to be aware of when you're working in Revit is you actually have to define your, your, um, your vertical uh, elements, okay? The vertical elements are what we would call levels. Down here, you got floor one, and this is at, a, uh, at, at the um, elevation of zero feet and zero inches. So zero feet and zero inches is right here. That's essentially... That's grade, okay, we'll call that grade. And then floor two is 20 feet up. And then floor three is 32 feet up and so on and so forth. As you go up, you have that right there. And then you have uh, host elements and host ed, host ed elements. So you've got something like this wall. Knocking on the wall right now, the wall is a host, meaning that it is going to be the element that other objects are looking for to be nested inside of. Windows are hosted inside of a host. Uh, so windows are hosted inside of a wall, doors are hosted inside of a wall, and so forth. So we have those things going on. You can put sheets together, and when you put sheets together, uh, you're able to actually print them all up and have a complete set of construction documents as if you were working with any other application such as AutoCAD, and frankly, Revit's really, really good at this stuff. And then you have some different things that are in the interface right here. I'm going to point these out right now because we get into this right now. This is actually a fairly important thing. So uh, the first thing is it talks about the home screen. Uh, the home screen is number one. That's uh, I'll show you where that's at right there. And then we got the quick access toolbar and the view tabs. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So going over to here, this is Revit right now. Now, if I go to Revit over here, if I click on this right here, this is my home tab. My home tab looks like this. This is, you know, AutoCAD is the same kind of a thing. And here you have an open models and a new models. Okay, right here. We're not going to do the families. The families are individual elements, such as actual individual doors, individual windows, individual um, landscape items, individual furniture. So that's what's there. We're not going to get into that right here. Instead, we're going to be using it right here. So you got open, you got new. So this is your, uh, this is the home screen. You got that right there. Going back to here. Oh. Uh, okay, so back over to here, the next thing you got up here is the quick access toolbar. Quick access toolbar is here. You've got, this is, this brings you to the home. Then you've got this, which is open. That's just opening a Revit file. You've got new, or rather save. This is saving the file. And then you've got undo. Exactly the same as you remember it from AutoCAD. It's the same kind of thing. Undo will undo the last thing you did. And then going further along here, I've got print. And then I got over here, I've got measuring between two references. So uh, Revit lets us go in here and get measurements of different uh, different elements. You know, we can actually pick out how we want to measure those. So we've got that. Uh, then you can also put in dimensions here. Uh, you can tag items. You can go ahead and put in text. You can go ahead and go and do, do a default 3D view at any time. You can uh, create a section at any time. And uh, you could also go ahead and thin your lines out. You know, that's just something that you uh, just watch this right here. A little video here shows you that. So if you use the thin lines, Thin lines allows you to either have thick light, like if you use this, I'll just let that video go again. If you watch this, you'll see that there are, there are there's thick lines right now. And then when you go ahead and use thin lines, it takes those and it thins them out. So they actually look more elegant and it's more useful. A couple of the tools here, we've got that. 
Now, other than that, there's a couple really important things. You got the ribbon. The ribbon is up here where you have architecture. And up here in architecture, this is where you make your walls. This is where you put in your doors, your windows. This is where you can place components such as furniture. This is where you can also put in columns. This is where we can put it on a roof, a ceiling, a floor, and so forth. So we got all these things right here. We've got those things in place. And uh, those are the basics right there. So that's where we're going to be around for right now. Uh, okay, notice right here that you've got these different tabs. These tabs allow you to see different views of the project. So I'm on floor one right now. If I click on this tab, I go to the 3D view. If I go here, I go to the second floor. I go here, I go to the third floor. If I go here, I go to 3D view of the breakfast area. So going through these different tabs, I'm able to go ahead and go through here. So your tabs are a very important way of going through here. And I can just go ahead and hit the X on any one of these and close them out if I don't want to see them. I could also, if I only want to see my current view, I can close inactive views by going here. So I'll go to my floor one right here and I'll go to close inactive views. Now watch what happens here. When I click on close inactive views, all the tabs close except the one I'm in right now. So it does that. So this is how Revit operates. Uh, Revit allows you to do an awful lot very rapidly, very quickly. So you got this kind of a thing going on right here. Okay, next thing is over here on the left. You've got something that we've not had before. You've got over here, this is over here. I'm going to do this. Oh, let's see here. Um, yeah, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and just knock this out here. I'll go here. Okay, now over here, what you've got going on here, this is your properties. Okay, right over here. This is your properties palette. You got that going on. And your properties is going to allow you to see the different elements that are the actual details of different elements that you might select. So I've got that going on right here. So if I were to go over here, and if I were to select this door, for instance, let me go in here and select this door. Watch this. And when I click on this door, I click on this door, and then over here, you're going to notice that what's going on right now is this says, okay, you're good to go. And I've got this going on. It says, okay, here's the door you got there, Tom. This is a single panel, uh, single panel for 36 inches by 80 inch door. That's what you got going on right there. So that's the properties. Further on down here, it tells you the level it's on and the type, frame type and the frame material and so forth. And the mark, the mark is actually the, uh, the number, the actual unique identifier right there. So these are all things, the properties are there for, it allows you to get individual information about these. So if I were to go down here, and if I were to change this number down here, this, this uh, room 104 down here, and I just go ahead and type in something like test right there, I type in test. Well, then over here, it says test there. Okay, why does it do that? Because they are linked dynamically. So I'm able to do that. I'm able to go ahead and rename that. So I'm going to put that make it 104 again. So I've got that thing going on. Here's another thing that's very interesting here is I have this door that's sitting right here. And as I have it selected right there, I've got it selected. I'll go ahead and do this again. Let's go ahead and uh, click on this door. When I click on this door, you're going to notice that I have some interesting things right here. I've actually got this two foot six. Well, what is that all about? It's actually giving me a dimension line here that's blue, and it says two foot six from here, from the column to the center of the door. Well, watch what happens when I change this. Let's say I want to move that door. Watch what happens when I make it three feet. I'll type in three and enter, and the door shifts. It shifts six inches down the wall. So it automatically does that. So Revit is different than AutoCAD in this regard. You're able to move objects simply by going ahead and changing those dimensions. You're able to go ahead and do that. It's actually very cool. You're able to go ahead and make that happen. So you got that going on. And if I want to change a little further, I can click on this again. And I can make it five feet like that. And by the way, notice I'm only typing in the word five. And I, the number five, I'm not typing in five feet. I'm just going and typing in five. And when I do that, it moves it up and down the wall. So I click on that again. I could type in two foot six and it goes ahead and moves it back to where it was. So these are the things you can do. And this is all happening through the properties right here. Now, in addition to the, to the, the, the properties palette right here, you have down here your project browser. Your project browser is here. And this is how we're able to browse through the project and see the different views. So we can look at the basement. So we can look at the floor, uh, the, uh, floor one view. This is where you actually go down here and see these other views, such as the uh, furniture plant for the uh, first for the first floor. So I double click there and I see this. I got all this furniture, and then I could also take a look here and I could take a look at the life safety plan. And the life safety plan looks like that, and for floor one, it looks like this right here. We actually have a uh, where you would actually exit the building if there was an emergency, like a fire fire route kind of a thing. And scrolling down here, I could then take a look at other things, such as okay, let's say I want to go down here and look at elevations. 
I go here and choose my east elevation. East elevation looks like that. And I can say, oh, let's get a little more detail on this. And I shade it and it gives me that kind of look there. Then I go to north and I can do the same thing and say, oh, you know what? I just want to get more detail on that. I go to shade it again. It gives you that kind of a look. And we can see some realism going on with this right now. So what's happening right now is as we're viewing this, as we're taking a look at it, we're able to see that this whole thing is working pretty nicely right here. So yeah, that'll have me right there. So all this is uh, there to give us information. And if I want to get a little bit more uh, a view that's a, that's going to be truer to real life, I could use realistic and then it gives me this kind of a view. And you see that right there and it's uh, very, very useful, very helpful. And going down here one more time, I'm going to go here and change this over here to shade it. Now, this is all basic stuff that you can do. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just using this tool right down here. This is your view control. This allows me to get more detail or less detail as we go through here. And this lets you do this. By the way, as far as um, panning and zooming and so forth, you do it the same way you did in AutoCAD. You just roll the mouse, mouse wheel forward or you roll it back. And then to pan, you hold it down just like we did. So the, so the, the navigating in Revit is identical to what you do in AutoCAD. Basically, it's the same thing. So you got that going on. Uh, you can also see things such as uh, sections. Like if I go here, if I were to say east-west building section, I go to here, that's a building section. Essentially what that does is that actually allows you to see a slice through the building. So is it the building slice? So now we're seeing the stairwells, we're seeing uh, through the hallways, we're seeing a different view right there. And then there's the north uh, north south uh, building section looks like this right here same kind of a thing so we go here and we go to shade it again and we do that and it looks like that there and then we've got uh this uh, sections view right here and then i can go ahead and take a look at these sections okay and these are actually wall type sections that you actually take a look through the building so all this is stuff that we have here and then when you're finally ready you you have the ability to go through and to make up uh a, a set of plan a set of uh set of sheets and the set of sheets right here is actually populated right now with information that you can print up and then present to a customer. And uh, this is the kind of thing you have available right here. And uh, very useful as you go through here, as you get this information. So we have all this kind of stuff going on right there. And that is how we go ahead and make that happen. And uh, that is what we have going on there. Yes, indeed. I can't stop there. Uh, let's see here. That's interesting. I never saw that before. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, that's very interesting right there. Go to detail. Look at that. Never knew that was there. Huh. Okay, well, we'll keep, we can move on through there. I just discovered something interesting. <laughs> they got some other things here. Uh, roof details and some other things. Okay, so we got these different things that are in here and we're good to go here. Okay. So that is what we're going to do here. Uh, as we go through here, that is how you're able to put together a full set of, uh, of Revit plans right here. So you got that going on right there. One second here. And uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, very good. And uh, we'll go ahead and move on from there. Okay, so before I move on from here, are there any questions at all? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So we will go ahead and continue on here. And uh, okay, what we're gonna do now is uh, now that we've kind of did a little bit of introduction, let me just kind of try to do a little bit of backfilling here. And as we have this here, we saw that there are these different elements right here. We have the ribbon, uh, the options bar shows up, the properties palette, these are things. So I'll get into some more detail on this, uh, the home screen. Uh, when you're working with Revit, uh, the file extension that you will save it as. We've been saving AutoCAD files with the default extension of DWG, which, which is, you know, we can say stands for drawing, DWG. Uh, Revit files are saved with the default file extension of RVT. RVT, so you have that going on. Uh, you can create a new project, and when you do, you can zoom and pan. Uh, you can also create camera views, which is interesting. Uh, create your visual styles. And then we talked about opening and reviewing a project. So we have this right here. Okay. So that is an introduction to, to Revit. Okay. So that is how we go ahead and begin to move around to Revit. Now, going back over here to Revit, I'm going to close out of this one. I'm going to file. I'm going to close out of this one here. And uh, do you want to save changes? I'm going to say no. I don't want to save. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save it as, file save as, and I call it. Uh, Modern Hotel Final uh, dash demo for demonstration. Uh, I'll go ahead and save it. So I've got that. 
Okay, so now I've got these basic uh, items together here. Anytime that I want to, I can click on this, this icon up here, looks like a, uh, it says default 3D view, and I click on there. And when I do that, it brings you right back to my 3D view, and that's what I have. And this view cube lets me go ahead and do the same kind of a thing. I can go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is what you got going on here. Now, because of the way this class is structured right here, I don't think I can have you guys follow along doing, doing Revit. I typically, I didn't assume you guys had AutoCAD or follow along there because some of you only have one screen. If this was actually in class, if we were actually on campus, I would have you guys follow along. But uh, what you'll have to do is just kind of like go through this video again. I'll make sure there's plenty of granularity. So you can go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and work on that. And uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and work on that. Okay, so that is an introduction to that. Let me just kind of stop here, full stop. Before I move on, any questions before I move along here? Because you're gonna need a, you're gonna need to know all this stuff. RBT stand for? Yeah, you break it up pretty bad, there, Elijah. I'm sorry. What, what was that? What does RBT stand for? R RBT uh, stands for uh, Revit. <laughs> RVT, R RVT stands for Revit, and that is the file extension, the same way DWG stands for Drawing in AutoCAD. So that's what that stands for. That's the file extension right there. So that's what RBT stands for. And then, uh, yeah, so as we're going into here, um, it's going to be my job to kind of show you some other cool stuff you could do here, but that's a great thing. Now, I will show you this right now, just so you guys can do this. I gave you some free content. Why? Because that's what I do. If you go here to Blackboard, and if you go here to Blackboard, what you're able to do is go here and you are able to download this right here. This is the modern hotel final. It is the same file I just showed you. And you're able to download that and take it and look at it and so forth. So I would recommend you do this. I'd recommend you go ahead and download this Revit Modern Hotel Final, okay? Now, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm not going to grade you on this, I'm not going to um, basically, you know, you know, I'm not going to grade you. I'm just telling you, you should do this. <laughs> you should go in there, open that up, download it, and just look at it. Look at a file, see, and do what I did there. If you need to just rewind this video, go back and go through the same steps that I did to understand what's going on right there so you can understand the different areas with it. Because we can't do this together, I you need to do that. Can I make you? No. Are you going to be graded on it? No. But that, but going forward with Revit, you kind of got to crawl before you walk and you got to walk before you run. So this is crawling. So download that. First assignment is download that. And just work with the file. Look at it. Look at look at look at the different views and so forth. Spend you know 10, 15 minutes with it. Just look at it. Okay. And then once you've done that, that'll give you some familiarity to do the project that we're going to be working on tonight. So Revit Modern Hotel Final. You want to do that. Uh, this other stuff here. This Revit. This Revit Simple Building One and Revit Simple Building Two. I don't even know. Why do I have? Why do I have that right there? It's interesting. Why do I have that? Revit Simple Building One. Revit Simple Building 2. I don't even know what that's there for. Um, looks like those are some downloads that I gave you guys. Um, oh, yeah, that's okay. Those are some Revit files that if you wanted to do this tutorial right here, I've got a tutorial on here. Revit tutorial, chapter, uh, chapter practices 1 through 5. I've got Simple Building 1 and Simple Building 2. So if you want to do this right here, if you, I'll go ahead and show you what this is. So if I go ahead and end this up, it goes ahead and it, this is what it looks like. I've got actually, now this is, frankly, it's kind of out of date. So I re, don't even bother using this anymore. Forget it, I should probably get rid of it, okay? It's, it's kind of out of date, so don't even worry about that. <laughs> Forget that, I should take these off, okay? Because the thing is, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do that right now. I am going to go ahead and get rid of this because I don't wanna confuse you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And does that actually say this? Let me see what I got in here. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And I'll get rid of that just so as not to confuse you guys, because I don't want to confuse you. So I'll delete this one too. Okay. And I'll delete this one too. And uh, that way, we'll do that. Oh, okay. So I'll delete those. Okay. So those are all gone. So that will not confuse you. Okay. So now, where are we going with this whole thing? Where we're going to go next is we are going to now see what we would do for this project tonight. Now, I'll show you how to get into this. And again, first item of business is you'd want to go in here and you'd want to go to the Revit Modern Hotel Final and do the same kind of just overview that I just did there. Once you've done that, I'm going to show you how to do the next thing here, which is going to be to start a project and begin to work on it. And this one's going to be called Revit Sandbox Simple House Freestyle. 
Now this means you can make any kind of house you want. I'm going to show you the basics right here. I'm going to show you how to start from scratch and how to do a basic house. And you could do as little or as much as you want. Okay, it shouldn't take you more than a few minutes to do this. And I mean that it's not like I'm not just saying that it's I'll show you exactly how to do it. You can copy exactly what I do or last semester I actually had a student who went pretty crazy with this and he did some stuff that was really pretty sophisticated. Um, I'm not looking for anything really sophisticated, but if you want to have fun with it, have knock yourself out, you know, have fun with it. And so we've got that going on right here. So we're going to get into that. We're going to be doing that. So as we get into that, we are going to move into um, that kind of process. So back over here to Revit, I can do this first step here. I'm going to close out of this. So I'm going to file and I will go to close. And uh, then what we're going to do is it's 650. So I am going to pause this right now because I like to give you guys, you know, a little 10 minute break here. So we're going to take 10 minutes. We'll come back at seven o'clock and we will continue on here. So take 10, uh, get yourself a drink or whatever. We will go ahead and continue on through here and we will build this out. This is not going to be a real lengthy thing because I realize you guys have to get Revit installed and you also have to give you kind of like a, uh, a little tour of the project to be working with. And then I'll show you how to do tonight's project. So uh, let's go ahead and take 10 minutes. I'll see you then.
Okay, we're back at it. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. All right, all right. We will continue. And uh, let's see here. Let me see. One, two, three. Okay, great. Okay. So we're going to continue on here. And um, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the projects that we're actually going to be working with. And uh, there's actually going to be several. Um, first, I'm going to show you this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and going to start a new project right here. But before I do that, let me go back over to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. And I want to show you something here. Is we got this Revit floor plan one template. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, download that because you always want to use a template, Revit floor plan one template. So I've got that. And the next thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go over here to this CAD floor plan one. Now this CAD floor plan one, this is this is basically what we did before. If you remember, we did an AutoCAD floor plan one. This will look very familiar to you. So let me go to here. So I'm going to download that. Okay, now first of all, let me open that up in AutoCAD. So go over here to AutoCAD. I was working on some stuff last week with one of you guys. I'm going to close out of there. And go ahead and push this up there. And uh, close out of this. If I can, can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. All right, so I got that. So I'll close out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and open that one. Save changes, no. I'm going to go ahead and open that drawing that I just downloaded there. And so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to my downloads. And I just downloaded this right here. Okay. So this is, remember this one. This is what we did before. This is floor plan one. This is what we did before. So what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be just kind of scratching out a project tonight, but our next project is going to be this, where we actually have a floor plan one. So, well, this is in, um, this is in AutoCAD. Okay. Hey, Tom, this is in AutoCAD. So Tom, my gosh. Okay. Why would we do that? You know, Professor Tom, why would, why would you do that? Okay. It's not in 3D. Why would I even do this? Well, okay. Let's, I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and save changes. No, I'm going back to Revit. I'm going to show you something here because with Revit, there's this very great thing that you can do here. I'm going to go ahead and going to go to new. I'm going to use the template that I just downloaded. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to my downloads. If I can, can I go to my downloads? I think I can. And uh, yeah, I think I can do that. Let me do this. Let me go up here and let me go to my downloads. Right here, downloads. If I can take this, I'm going to drag it right down to here. A little trick, you can do this this way. So I can go here, I'm going to take this Revit floor plan one. So go here. So I'll go ahead and start this. And, you know, Revit floor plan one, I've got this. I'm go ahead and click on OK. So I start from a template. And there's a few things in here. So you you save your template and then you open it up. It sounds like there's a little, if it does this, your model is being upgraded. Don't worry about that. It has to do that because it's an older, uh, it's an older file. So anyway, don't worry about that. Okay, so then what we would do is this. Then what I would do, and I'm going to go over this again next week just to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to go to insert and just to show you what we're going to do, I'm going to link the CAD file. And the CAD file I'm going to go to is going to be, uh, is that the one? Yeah, it's that one right there. So go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to go ahead and say current view only. And I'm going to change the colors to be, I'll just go ahead and use black and white. And then I'll hit open. And it goes ahead and drops this in here. Okay, so this is what I've got. Okay, now that is it. Now that's just an AutoCAD drawing right there. So what I would do then is this is actually kind of cool here. Watch this. I'm going to go to wall. And uh, the wall I'm going to do here is I got the basic wall interior is five inches. I got a basic wall. Uh, is, is, okay, do I have an exterior wall? Exterior wall, five inches. So I'm going to do an exterior wall. So I'll do this. Now watch this. I go up here and watch this. Notice, see what it's trying to do? It's trying to find the center line, okay? Because uh, right now, as you're working with Revit, one you're going to notice is up here you have what's called your options. So what's going to happen right now is I'm going to go ahead and draw this. And this has me drawing uh, basically up from, from uh, level one is the base constraint. That means once it's, once it's base point, it's going to start at the, the bottom is going to be level one. It's going to go up to level two. That's 10 feet. It's going to be using the wall center line and chain means that you're going to be connected. So watch that. Put my cursor here and look at that. It finds it beautifully because uh, it knows what a Revit, it knows what an AutoCAD file is when it sees it. So Revit likes, Revit likes AutoCAD. All right. So the two work together really nicely. So I'm going to go right along here. Now look at this. This is just beautiful. I go right here and find this. Stop it here, right there. And right now, I don't even have to type anything in because this was already set up from what we did before. Because 
when you're working with Revit, one of the really cool things about this is most people these days who are using Revit have an investment in AutoCAD drawings. So therefore, there are legacy drawings and so forth that they want to bring in. So I got this, I'm going to my default 3D view. When I do that, bada boom, bada bing, you got that right there. Okay, so I just went ahead and did that. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Looks a little different than in 3D. So I've got that right there. So I went ahead and put that together. Now, if I go back to level one, I could then begin to put in my uh, my my door. So I go door, watch this. I go ahead and place the door right here. And it's like, oh no, the door is not the right side. What do I do? Well, I click on this right here. It's supposed to be three feet. So I'll click on there. It's a 30, you notice it's 30 inch door. We go down here. So let me see if there's a 36 inch door. And hey, there is 36 by 80 inches. I click there and boom, there it is. Then I go ahead and just use my arrow keys. Click on that, use my arrow keys, move it over a little bit, and it's per fits perfectly right there. So I've got that. Okay. And then at that point, I could go ahead and continue to put indoors. So I go ahead and make this uh, 30. These are all 36. So I'll go ahead and go here, go ahead and pull this right up into here. What's that point? Why is that not doing that? Oh, I didn't draw. You don't have walls yet, do you? I didn't draw the walls yet. No. Okay. So we're going to do this again. So go back to here. I'll do the front. And so we'll go ahead and just drop this. Now, you may look at this and say, oh man, you know, this, this stinks. You know, it's like uh, my, my door swings wrong. Well, guess what? That's what these little arrows are for. You click on this and it changes the swing. Pretty cool stuff there. And if you want to swing it outside, you can do that or swing it back inside like that. So that's how we do that. So I got that and I didn't put in my interior walls. Now to do the interior walls, I go to wall again and I'll go to wall architectural. Now I'm gonna change it to basic wall interior. I'm not gonna do the whole thing right here, but I just wanna show you guys how, how really easy Revit is if you just understand you know, what it's looking for you to do. So I'm gonna take this, drag it out to here, boom, done. Now go ahead and do it again. Go ahead and take it right from here. And this one goes right to here. And you'll be able to do this too. I'm not, you know, at uh, the old saying goes, at no time do my fingers leave my hand. You know, it's just, it's a, uh, it's a very simple process as we go through this. And uh, go through there. Go ahead and do this and back across to there. Boom, boom. All right, now once I've done this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like when we get this far. Okay, so now what I've done there is I've traced all my interior walls. Now watch this. When I go to 3D, look at that. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, you got that going on. Okay, so I got my one door and then I just go ahead and place the rest of them. So I'd go back to here. Then I can continue to place these. So I go to door and I just go ahead and place these. Now I can find them because I went ahead and placed them. So I'll go ahead and place this, do this, and flip it. And I'm not worried about them being exact right now. I'm just placing them just because I want to just kind of show you how this works. And let you guys see how simple this is. And you notice that they're being tagged as they go along here. And if it's a little bit out of position, I can go ahead and just use my arrow keys to move it down into position like that. There we go. We've got that right there. Okay, now from there, what we got is we also have some windows. You see it says four foot right there for windows. So I'll go to window. And I got 60 by 30. I'll do my five foot windows first because that's 60. So 60 foot, 60 inch window would be right here. Drop it right there. And then I'll do it, drop the 60 inch window right here. And there's one right here too. I'm just going to place it closely. I can jack it later if it's not perfect. So I've got all those and then I'll change the next one. I'll go to window again and I'll go ahead and do 48 by 36 inch slider window. I'll go ahead and place these. This is a 48 inch window right there and right here. And over here. Okay, so when I've got this one's a little bit off. There we go. All right, now once I've got that, let's take a look at it 3D again. And boom, look at that. <laughs> it looks pretty great so far. All right, so that's what you're able to do as you work with this right here. And that's how you would be able to go ahead and place this and begin to do some work right there. And the last thing would be to do a roof. If I were to go to here, if I were to go to put a roof on there, I can just do a roof real quickly. And this is just to show you the, the, the concept. So I go to roof. And I'd go to roof by footprint, and then I'd go ahead and I would make give it a one foot overhang. And then what I would do here is I'm actually able to pick the walls. That's what this tool is right here. This allows me to pick the walls. And when I do this, notice when I touch this, come on you, 
right? Yeah, okay, see it's, it sees it right there. It's gonna actually place that out there. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this, little triangles are showing up around here. That means each one of these has a, has a uh, slope. And that's actually okay, because I can go back and fix it later, but it's making this magenta polyline. And as I do that, when I click here, it does this and it gives me this look right here. Now, as I do this, it looks like that, which is not exactly what I want, but it, it gave it a roof. But I want to get rid of some of what are the what are called those um, some of those um, uh, those those slopes. We don't need to slope all the way around. So where do I want the slope? Well, I don't want a slope here. So I'll click here. And I'll take the slope off there by unchecking define slope right there. I'll do the same thing here, and I'll uncheck to so that doesn't define the slope. I'll do the same thing here, and I'll uncheck that. So once I've done that, I'll hit the green check mark and let's see what we got here. Go to 3D view and boom, look at that. Looks pretty nice, huh? And uh, that's how we go ahead and take that. And then to finish it off, I can go ahead and click on this wall and go to attach top base right there. I just attached it. And I go ahead and do the same thing here. Click on this right here and attach this. And I'm just kind of doing kind of a quick thing right here. And it does this and you'll notice that there's a little area here that also needs to go up. That's All right, and then over here we do the same thing. We click on this and we attach this. So anyway, so that is how Revit lets you rapidly go ahead and put one together. So that's going to be the project that we're going to do. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that for next week, but that's a little quick quick preview. So that's one. And uh, now that we understand how that works, uh, let's see what else we have here. I'm going to go ahead and save this real quickly. I'm going to save this as I would save it as uh, to my desktop. And I'll go to my CIT right here. And I'm going to call this one um, Revit. Uh, Revit for a one. Okay, so I got that. Uh, no. So I'll just grab the floor plan one. Like that. Okay, so I've got that. Now we got a basic idea as far as how that works. Okay, now um, the next thing is that we're going to be working with. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to file. I'm going to close this. And what I'm going to do is I'm then going to open up the next project. So we're going to do that. Then there's a project here we're going to work on that's called a custom garage. We're going to make this custom garage. This is going to be the second view, the second thing we're going to make here. And uh, looks like this. And hmm, I'm missing some information here. That's interesting. Why is that missing information here? Huh. Okay, there's a real spread there. So your realistic view right here, you have this nice cedar shape right here. You got this. And uh, Professor. Professor? Yeah. Uh, when I am in CAD and I need to undo some command, I type U. Uh, what about what about red? In Revit, what you would do is to undo command in Revit, you can do one of two things. You could either go up here and uh, like if I'm here in level one, and if I were, and we'll let, let me just get rid of this, I'll delete that. Okay, when I get rid of that right there, that's my undo command right there. I could also use control Z. Okay, control Z, or I, I go to the, the command. Yep. Because I inserted the floor panel plan one, and I would like to undo that. But I tried to delete, but I couldn't. Uh, yeah, well, you, you should be able to undo it. Undo? <clears throat> OK. Yep. Oh, OK. Thank you. And, and for those that want to know, you can type in Control Z in pretty much any Windows application, any Microsoft or any Windows application that will, that will use your undo. So if I go to undo right there, it brings it back. But this is what the floor one looks like right here. This one has some doors. And if uh, it has some doors, has, has a window. If I go to here, it looks like this. I'm gonna show you guys what's called a section box right here to show you what this looks like. If I go to section box right here, I can actually take this. And this is actually something kind of cool here. I can grab this and I can actually take this and push this view back and see what this looks like. Isn't that kind of nice? It gives you a live section. Okay, it shows you right here 
you've actually got a hole in the floor and you actually have stairs going up. You got like a folding stairwell right there. So that's just kind of a pretty nice garage right there that you have right there. And that's what you got happening. That's what you would go ahead and do. And that's what we have in place right there. So it's kind of just a very basic little project we're gonna work it on. So that's gonna be the, uh, that's gonna be the second, the next project we work on, the third project actually. And then the last one is going to be the very final thing we're gonna work on, which looks like, this right here, this is the final project we're going to work on here. This is the Winthrop house. Okay, this is actually the house that I built in Michigan. And uh, this is actually, um, I actually designed this. Uh, I'd only worked with a CAD for a couple of years, but I designed this and had it built. It's a pretty simple thing. I had a friend that was a builder and the city approved it. So I actually, you know, I guess that means I'm a licensed architect you know, in the state of Michigan. Uh, not really, but you know, it's like I was able to go ahead and I actually did have this built. The house is still standing. And uh, that is what we have going on there. So this is the house. It's a very basic kind of, uh, you know, two story right here. And we're gonna be doing this. I try, I like to keep it simple for you guys just because uh, it's, it's easier, you know, than uh, going through some tough stuff. But this is what this one looks like. So the, the level one looks like this. It's, you got basically a floor plan with a garage attached. You got that. And it's got your stairs. You're going to, going to put in a stairwell. I actually gave you a block for the kitchen. I've got a, uh, an area right here. I've got some window, some different information here. Level two gives you this kind of thing. This is the second floor. It's a three bedroom house. The basement uh, base looks like this right here. You got a washer and dryer in the basement. You got that going on. And uh, those are the basic things. Then you have, you have some ceiling views, and then you got some other things. I got some 3D views here that I actually was working with. Um, yeah, different 3D views. Yeah, this is actually the, uh, uh, let's see here, stairs going to the kitchen. Yeah, these are the stairs going into the garage right there. And then I've got besides that, there's a few other views that I might have here. Uh, I got some renderings here. Rendering of the kitchen right there, kind of a rough thing just to kind of show how it works basic, you know, basic idea as far as how that works. Okay. So that's going to be the last thing we're going to work on. Okay. So that being the case, you guys are seeing there's a pretty good idea here. There's a chat right there. Uh, okay. Very good. Thank you very much uh, about that message there, Logan. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll continue on through here. Okay. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do for this week right here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to close out of here. And this is going to be a very basic thing. First of all, you need to open the modern hotel plan and work with it. Just go through the kind of steps I did. Pan it, zoom it, look at some of the views, understand how this thing works. That's, those are all very important things. Now, once you've gone through those basic steps, um, then the next thing you want to do is you're going to make a new project. So to make a new project, you're going to click on this right here. You go ahead and click on new. Now, when you click on new, you're going to stop because there's different template files. Now, the template file that we want to use here, and Imperial Construction gives you more than you need. It's just a lot to wade through. So Imperial Architectural is a little simpler. So we'll choose Imperial Architectural and we'll click on, it's gonna be project and click on okay. Just click on okay and it goes ahead and brings us up. This is basic right here. Now, this is all you're gonna do here. All you're gonna do is gonna go to wall and you go to wall architecture right here. Now, this is basic wall generic. It's nothing too tricky. Now, when you're drawing in Revit, here's the big thing. Here's the big thing you want to be aware of as you're working with this right here. And that is this. Okay, what you've got happening is right here, you can choose how you want to draw. You're going to see that right now, this blue highlight right here, that's the line option. That's the default that we have right there. That's the line option. You can also choose the rectangle option if you want to start with a rectangle. You can also, if you want to do something else, you can do one of these polygon options. So you got those, you could also start. And this is like, instead of using line, circle, rectangle, like you do in AutoCAD, you have the, this is where it is right here. And so then you got circle right here, and then you got your arc options right here. You got some arc options. And then you can also pick on lines, which is something we'll get to next week. But for this week, we're just gonna be, we're just gonna work with right now, this line command. We use line, or we could work with rectangle. You know, if you wanna do a real simple plan, you can use rectangle or you can use line. We'll just use a rectangle right now. So I'm gonna go to rectangle right here. I click on a rectangle and you go ahead and draw a rectangle. Now watch this. I click one point and I start to pull out. Now notice that it's giving you dimensions right now. So we're just gonna keep this real simple. I'm gonna pull this down here, drop it right there. Now you're gonna notice that when I did that, uh, get my enter key. okay, so I went ahead and did that. And when I've got this, it gives me a basic shape. Now, if I click on this right here, it says that's 45 feet. Now, I'm going to make this a 25 foot by 25 foot structure. So I'm going to click there and change to 25. That's 25 feet. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this line right up here. I'm going to make this 25 feet. So I just did that. Now let me do that one more time. So you guys are clear about this. To draw this, you go to the architecture command, you go to wall, and you choose wall architectural, and you just use the default. Then you just go ahead and use the rectangle option. So to do that, you're going to go here, and you're going to click on um, this rectangle option right here. You got line by default. We're going to change the rectangle. So we change the rectangle. And once I've done that, I just click one point, and then I click another point. I do that. Now, when I've done that, uh, that's all That's all drawn there. And you don't have to worry about picking exact points because you can always go back and use the uh, and use temporary dimensions to change. So I click on this wall right here, and I want to change this from 50 foot 6 to 25. You don't have to put, type in the foot symbol. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. AutoCAD will interpret 50 as, or rather 25 as 25 inches. Revit interprets it as feet. So that's 25 feet. Then I'll click on this one and I'll make this one 25 feet too. So I'll click on 25 feet. Okay. Uh, what just happened there? I don't know. All right. So let me make sure that worked. So that's 25 feet and 25 feet. Okay. And when I did that, the one thing I didn't do is I made them 20 feet tall, which is more than I wanted to. So I'm going to back out of there. I'm going to show you one more thing here just to show you something else here. Back all the way up. Okay, so we'll back out of here. And I'm going to do this one more time just to show you how this works. We've got architecture and a wall. And when I got the basic wall generic, the only thing I'm going to do is different. I'm going to change it from, I'm going to leave it at level one. I'm going to change the top constraint to be up to level two. All right, this will make it just a 10 foot wall. So I'll go here and I'll do the rectangle again. Click here, go to there again. And uh, repetition is the key to learning. <laughs> so I do this again, 25 right there. Okay, so I got 25 feet by 25 feet. Now, I'm going to take a look at this in 3D. I'm going to take a look at it in 3D. It looks like that. I've got that. And if you want to add a little bit of color to it, you can go here and you can say, okay, let's just take a look at some consistent colors. Gives you kind of a gray box there. Realistic doesn't give you a whole lot more, but it gives you that. So you got that. So that is a 25 foot by 25 foot structure. That's all we're looking for. Now back to level one. And you'll go back to level one. And I just want you guys to get familiar with this. Okay, so get familiar with going up here and using your 3D view and then going back and forth. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to door. And the assignment is to put in at least two doors. One, two, <laughs> like that. And then I got this and I click it. And I want to go ahead and ah, I want, I want the bolt to swing in the inside. So that's good, that's fine right there. So I went ahead and put them. And if you wanna change how far they are from the edge, you can go there. This is five feet right here. If you want the bolt to be five feet, you can click here and that's six feet. So I can make them both five feet like that. And then we're good to go. Okay, so let's take a look at it in 3D. I can click right here too. And oh, hey, Shazam, look at that. Then I go back here and I could go back and I could go ahead and put in some windows. So go to window, I go to, I just go ahead and put in four windows. One, two, three, four. Nothing too tricky. I just want to get a feel for it. Then I go back to 3D. And it looks like that. Okay, so now, you know, that's the basics right there. Okay, so now once I've done that, I'm, I'm in level two right now. Now what I can do is I can start to draw a roof. Okay, now, when you draw the roof, you would go to the architecture tab here and you'd go to roof. Now, when I go to roof, it says roof by footprint. And then it gives you this, that's gonna say this, you created the roof on the lowest level. Would you like to move it to level two? Well, yeah, you know, if it says that, you always say yes, cause it's watching out for you. So you go to yes. Now, what I want to do here is I want to do a couple of things. First of all, it's always a good idea to have an overhang on your roof. So I changed the one for one foot, and then I go ahead and I'm going to hover my cursor right here. Now, notice when I hover the cursor, this tool right now, it's called Pick Walls. So this allows me to go ahead and draw this sketch using these pick walls. So I hover my cursor, and you'll notice that the dashed line is outside the wall. That's where I want it to go. So I click there. It gives me a magenta line. Go over here, do the same thing. I go down here and do it again. I go down here and do it again. And once I've done that, it gives me a magenta polyline all the way around. I click on the green check mark, and then I'll go up to my 3D. When I do this, it looks like that, okay? Which is really not what I, it's, you know, it works, but it's kind of a, you know, I don't see too many roofs that look like that. So we're gonna go back to here. And now at this point, I can't see my roof. It's like, oh man, Revit, what's up with Revit? Well, you know, the thing is, think of it in terms of, of where the roof is right now. I'm on level one right now. Where would I need to go to see the roof? Level two. Exactly, level two. So go to level two. When I go to level two, 
it shows me this. Oh, it's like, okay, I'm looking at something now. So watch what happens now. How do I select the roof? What do I do? Well, I click right on it. So I click on it, it highlights and it turns blue. And then I have this edit footprint. Now watch this, I go to edit footprint like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the slopes away on the top and the bottom. So I'll click here. How do I take the slope away? I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna uncheck defined slope. And the same thing down here, click on this slide and un uncheck defined slope there. So I got that, got that. And then I'm gonna hit the check mark like that. And then let me take a look at it. I'm gonna to go to my, uh, my 3D view, which is right here. And there it is, looking pretty good, looking pretty good there. All right, that's looking all right. Okay, so we're looking all right. Now at this point, I'm gonna extend these, I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna extend this by going attach top or base. So I attach this to the top that I wanna to go to, which is there. Okay, then I'll go ahead and rotate it around here and uh, do the same thing here. Click on this. Oh, by the way, what I'm doing right here is to rotate it around. What I do is you could use the cube. I could use the cube here and I could actually just go ahead and use this, but I'm holding on my shift key. I'm holding on my shift key, then I'm doing holding on the wheel. Hold my shift key and the wheel, hold the wheel down. I'm able to rotate it that way. So that's how I'm able to do that. Okay, I think I mentioned that earlier, but hopefully I did. But now, okay, so you hold your shift key down and hold down the mouse key. That's so you can, it's, it's the same thing you do with 3D and AutoCAD, but anyway. So I've got that. Now at this point right here, uh, my roof is not giving me a lot of realism. So I'm gonna click on the roof right here. I'm gonna change the roof up here to be wood rafter, eight inch asphalt shingle, you know? So I click there and it gives me that kind of a look right there. So I've got that. Now my walls right here, my walls um, are just this gray wall. So what I could do is I could select the walls one by one. Now I'm gonna show a little, little trick here. You click on one wall. And if you right click your mouse, you're able to then go ahead while you got your cursor on, you go to select all instances, which means you'll select all the walls. So I'll select all the instances visible to you. You could do it one at a time. Then up here in my properties, I can change the wall type there. I'm just gonna use generic four inch brick. So change the generic, generic four inch brick. And then, hey, look at that. Now I've got a brick house and it's got a shingle roof that easily. So we're able to do that, but a boom, bada bing. And we're able to make that happen right there. And so that's basically what we're after. Last thing we're gonna do is put in a floor. We're not gonna worry about a roof right now. We'll just act like it's an open thing. So I'll go to level one. And to do a floor, you go right here. You go right here to floor. I'll say floor architectural. And I'll just use generic floor 12 inches. And I'm just gonna go here and I'm going to make a rectangle. I could, well, I could actually, I can actually, I'll just make a rectangle. I just go rectangle from, the, from this right here and over to here outside to outside snapping, because Revit snaps as well as AutoCAD does. I hit my green check mark and it creates that. Let's see what it did. Well, there we have it. We now have a structure with a floor and a roof, four walls, four windows, and two doors. And that is all I want you to do for this week, uh, just to get in and work with Revit and get familiar with it. So um, download Revit, and work with it and just do a simple house like that does it and basically as long as it looks something like this that's all i'm looking for okay you can get a little fancy if you want to but i'm not requiring it if you want to put in interior walls you can do that too but i'm not going to require any of that right now that's just the basics so that's all we have i'm going to save this as and uh, what do i have you guys calling it i have you guys naming it right here uh over here for this one it's uh, we are now on week nine and uh, what you're gonna do is you're going to save it as, okay, right here, submit it as Revit, that, Revit Sandbox dash your name. So I'm gonna do that. Why do we call it Sandbox? Because we're just kind of like messing around. <laughs> you know, not doing anything too tricky. Uh, and we're not really doing anything that's permanent. We're just kind of just kind of messing around here. So that's Sandbox, okay. So we're gonna save it as Sandbox, save. And we're gonna save it as, um, uh, Revit Sandbox. Yeah, and uh, boom, that's it. And that's what you'll submit. And that's all I'm looking for now. And you don't have to do the brick even. I just did that for visualization. You don't have to change this either. But that's how you'd go ahead and do it. So that's it. And I'm just going to go ahead and stop that right there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save it. And I'm going to leave that right there. So that is all we're going to have. And I'll post this video. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right now because that's going to be all we have. So that's, uh, that's all, folks. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.